Hello everyone and welcome to this GSMA IoT web talk which today focuses on enabling 5G autonomous robots in the factory. My name is Jo Gilbert and I'm a technical director and the manufacturing lead at the GSMA and I'm delighted today to be welcoming our speakers and panellists and they are Avik D from Ghost Robotics, Elise Neal and Joe Jaffe from Verizon, uh, Matthew Chiruka from Vecna Robotics and Robert Topol from Electron Inc. And I'm really looking forward to hearing um, everybody speak today. So um, I'd like to take you through the agenda for the next hour. So um, I'd like to start by introducing you to the 5G IoT for manufacturing community briefly. And then I will hand over to Elise Neal and Joe Yaffe, who are going to be talking about enabling scaled autonomous robots in the factory and the approach that Verizon is taking in this space. And watch out for a couple of interactive polls uh, when Joel is speaking. A notification will appear on the top of the screen. And if you go to the menu on the right hand side, you can um, uh, interact with the polls. We'll then move on to um, a panel and industry showcase where Avik, Matthew and Robert will join Elise and Joel, give an insight into their robotic businesses. And then we will open the discussion on how 5G connectivity and IoT technology is driving transformation opportunities. So please feel welcome to submit any questions that you have throughout the session in the Q&A box on the right hand side of your screen. And we will um, answer those questions at the end of the session. And in case we don't get time to answer all of the questions, uh, don't worry about that because we'll be uh, producing a blog after the webinar and there'll be some Q&A in that. And anybody that's registered for today's um, web talk will receive a link when that's ready and published. OK, so I mentioned the 5G IoT manufacturing community that is hosted by the GSMA, and I'd like to tell you a little bit more about that. So this is a forum that was established in early 2020, and it's a global community of manufacturers, network operators, and the wider ecosystem that are coming together to pinpoint and identify the challenges and opportunities for manufacturers and how 5G IoT plays a role in this. And our overall objective is around the education, the support, and advancing global um, adoption of 5G IoT in the manufacturing industry and of course in the wider industrial sectors. So we cover a number of topics uh, within the forum and um, this includes use cases, we've looked at benefit propositions, we've looked at public and private networks, edge computing is a big topic and of course AMRs or autonomous mobile robots as we're dealing with today. And to the right hand side on the screen at the moment, you can see a number of the publications that we've worked on over uh, the last year and year or so. And the link at the bottom will take you um, to, to the majority of that content is available online. And so I'd encourage you to go and take a look at that, but of course, not until after this webinar, ideally. Okay. So as well as the uh, content that I've described, we also encourage industry collaboration to develop real world solutions. And the GSMA Foundry, which is uh, new this year, is a place where we can support that to happen. So ideas and collaborations that are seeded within the 5G IT manufacturing community can be developed through the GSMA Foundry. I don't want to spend any more time really talking about that today because we've obviously got some exciting content to, to get onto. Um, but suffice to say, if you find this interesting and you're a manufacturer, network operator, or part of the wider ecosystem, and you think that partaking in this community might be of interest, then please do get in touch with us at the manufacturing at gsma.com email address on the screens right now. Okay, so I think that's enough for me for now. And um, let, let's talk about robots. And I, I'm really happy to be able to introduce to you um, Elise Neal from uh, Verizon. So uh, Elise, over to you. Hi, hello everyone. Um, thank you so much to the GSMA for the opportunity to come and share a little bit about what Verizon is doing with autonomous mobile robots. We're leveraging the 5G future and our software capabilities and mobile edge compute to bring the future to today. 
I also wanna give a huge shout out and thank you to all of the great partners who are joining the conversation today. And so if you've got questions, if you've got comments, we would love to have you participate in the chat. We'll be popping in there uh, from time to time through the balance of the time and would love to hear from you. All right, let's get started. So as we first kind of think about um, autonomous mobile robots in the factory, I wanted to lay the foundation just so that we're all defining this opportunity in the same way. So on the next slide, what you'll see is really how we begin to think about industrial revolution and industry 4.0. I think it's important that we all kind of start here so that we have a good understanding of what we mean when we say the fourth industrial revolution or industry 4.0. Sometimes I find it's like the word gourmet. It's kind of the definition is in the eye of the beholder. So on the left-hand side, you see the four common elements that help to identify and clarify what is Industry 4.0. It's defined by this interconnection of physical, digital, and biological worlds coming together. It's defined by information transparently, transparency, the ease of information flow up and down and side to side throughout the value chain and supply chain. It also is indicative of high degrees of technical assistance. And you see this oftentimes as we think about um, opportunities to create efficiencies in labor, whether that be a chat bot or a robot or any other kind of additive or adaptive manufacturing. And then ultimately this kind of decentralized decision-making, the opportunity for decisions to happen anywhere along kind of that product line. On the right, what you see is a wide variety of discrete product elements that are coming into market. I think hopefully many of you are familiar with each of these elements. And they're beginning to kind of tackle one particular element of this uh, of the industry 4.0 opportunity. But what we think about at Verizon is actually not just addressing one singular part of this opportunity, but the holistic component. What we see as the industry 4.0 promise is this orchestrated experience that helps to bridge a fully autonomous, self-improving, self-healing, self-performing process of matching the jobs to be done, the work that is at hand, to the most appropriate set of resources. And this has a wide variety of implications as we think about kind of understanding the environment, understanding what is happening, simulating what used to happen, predicting what could happen, and then actually executing on that work, which has components of each of these four capabilities today. One of the challenges that we see as we move to the next slide is kind of thinking about why aren't more manufacturers kind of fully embracing the industry 4.0 vision? What's holding us back? And how do we think about those opportunities to move forward? What must be true in order for us to realize this fully autonomous kind of self-improving process and, and, and of matching kind of jobs to be done and the appropriate resources? We see there's five big categories of problem statements that are really holding back our customers today. The first is really thinking about a wide variety of hardware. Uh, oftentimes, in, in almost every single instance, no single manufacturer is using hardware from one particular OEM. And so as we think about information sharing, data sharing, application sharing, et cetera, these kind of heterogeneous uh, hardware systems create lacks of interoperability. The right hand literally doesn't talk to the left hand. And so as we think about those components, we know that there's an opportunity to kind of pull that back to create seamlessness between varied hardware solutions. Oftentimes we also see that there's legacy applications and proprietary protocols that make for ease of sharing difficult, whether that be, again, kind of sharing down the process line or thinking about opportunities for efficiencies, the idea that we will come in as an industry and we will rip and replace legacy hardware is just a non-starter for our customer base, and rightly so. We like to talk about forward compatibility. How do we make sure that the software and the solutions and the applications that we produce are forward compatible for every single one of our customers uh, down the line. There's also fragmented data sources. So as you think about you know, an end-to-end -end supply chain, data coming from the port, it then goes into a logistics operation, it backs into a distribution center, then inside the DC, there are specific uh, data sources and applications there. Then you get it for forward deploy and into the retailer and ultimately that customer's hand. Well, those data sources today don't create sharing and compatibility between one another. And so the ability to predict or to create automation in this end-to-end -end value chain becomes highly challenging. Then there's the network side of it. The more things that you connect to the network and the more components that you move from connecting into automating and then from automation into autonomy, you gotta make sure that network is lock solid, that you have ultra secure connections, that they are ultimately uh, always reliable and that the bandwidth is completely sufficient for any potential application that you need. And so our customers are telling us, listen, with the current 
you know, protocols that we have today, whether they be Wi-Fi or even 4G LTE, Bluetooth, et cetera, it's too jittery. It doesn't meet the requirements that we need in order to fully embrace autonomy and ultimately into, uh, into automation. And then when we think about the number of connections to actually scale that, the number of connected devices in a potential manufacturing floor or on, on a factory line could potentially leverage hundreds of thousands of sensors and data components. And so as you think about that data coming in in real time, different types of distributed data sources, the need for distributed decision making, the need to kind of pull all that data together and make sense of it, they're really kind of at an impasse, our manufacturer friends, and saying, hey, listen, what can you do to help? Well, the good news is that when we think about the opportunity, on the next slide, we think about this interconnected and interoperable world. We believe that 5G provides a foundational technology to support Industry 4.0. But the reality is it isn't just about 5G. That provides a critical capability. But the reality is, is that 5G isn't a business. It, it really is a technology. And so it's about using this, this communication fabric, this kind of interoperability fabric that has unique inherent capabilities that we've never seen before in any other type of cellular fabric or generation or any other type of, of kind of connectivity component. And leveraging that with intelligent software kind of bring these solutions to bear. This is exactly what we're doing inside of New Business Incubation at Verizon. On the next slide, you'll see a very high level overview of the investments and the businesses that we're making to help bridge together for customers the incredible power of 5G, our intelligent software using uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning, our mobile edge compute capabilities and bringing those components together, this networking, our hardware partners, our software partners together and making investments to help address what is happening on the floor. That's what we're doing with sensor intelligence. What's, what's happening? Tell me what exists there. Tell me where it's happening. That's all the work we're doing in location intelligence. And then help me create efficiencies in how we actually perform the job. How do we create those labor efficiencies? How do we look for opportunities to create seamlessness and security across the line? And those are the investments that we've made in robotics, whether they be on the ground or in the air, or deployed kind of locally with the brain or taking that brain, that command and control and intelligence and moving it into the edge with our thin client capabilities, we're really trying to begin to address for customers an end-to-end -end opportunity for them to say yes to the possibilities of Industry 4.0. So I get really excited about this and I'm so excited because I have a fantastic team of colleagues and partners who are working alongside Verizon to kind of help make this happen. I want to introduce you to Joel Yaffe, who runs strategy for our autonomous mobile robot business unit. And Joel's going to tell you a little bit more about the work that we're doing and give you a couple winks and nods to some of the successes that we're seeing. Joel, over to you. Thanks so much, Elise. And I just would like to call attention to our audience that we're uh, conducting some polls during uh, this presentation. So if you could go to the polling um, polling widget in the uh, Blue Jeans application and cast your vote. It will give us the ability to get some real-time uh, insight from, from you all. Um, it's uh, well documented by now that change is the new normal for manufacturers, whether it's caused by hopefully one-time events like corona or whether it's the uh, changes that are demanding uh, demanded by uh, for product personalization, uh, faster time, timeliness, and accuracy of new products and, and quality. And for manufacturers, the ability to anticipate and respond to changing market conditions, competitive activities, and customer preferences can be the difference between profit and loss and success and failure. The old model of long cycle mass production to achieve economies of scale works less well in this new normal. And this shows up in different types of industrial automation, uh, which we'll go through quickly. Traditionally, manufacturers have relied on assembly lines and, and fixed industrial robots, which are very efficient in fixed configurations, but expensive and uh, difficult to set up and reconfigure. And these have been around for 100 or so years. And the opportunity here is you know, still to grow, but, uh, but at a relatively slow rate. In the last half century, you had the introduction of AGVs, mobile robots that uh, follow fixed paths that were largely mechanical, but enabled uh, organizations to have a bit more flexibility in their, in their production environments. Um, so late 20th century technology. But in order to adapt, in order to become more dynamic and more flexible and support these changing, uh, ever-changing market requirements, the new 
technology, technology of the 21st century that is experiencing hypergrowth, and which we're going to talk about today in the context of uh, 5G industry Fordo and supporting more efficient factories of the future are autonomous mobile robots, which can dynamically navigate without the need for external infrastructure and can be deployed quickly and easily into existing environments. However, today, these uh, AMRs are basically data centers on wheels. They're designed to operate without network connectivity, and therefore, every single device, of which there can be hundreds in a given environment, has its own compute, its own storage, is doing largely local processing, which is uh, an improvement over previous forms of technology, but still largely inefficient and not taking advantage of the network technologies that are that are available today, particularly through 5G. So um, what I'd like to do is just take a look at the uh, polling results. Um, very interesting. So if you could go to the next chart, please. We're going to talk a little bit about trends in manufacturing. Um, and uh, and the first thing, which the poll results seem to align quite quite well to, is that manufacturers are a pretty conservative bunch. Uh, anecdotally, 10% uh, of a manufacturer's uh, production assets are connected in any form, and 90% of those connections are fixed wired. Um, a study from PwC and the Manufacturing Institute from uh, two years ago uh, revealed that 70% of global manufacturers were still at the earliest stages of smart factory technology adoption. And looking at the poll, we could see that uh, perhaps not not too much has uh, has improved. I, I see only 16% uh, of uh, of the polling uh, respondents uh, indicated that they're uh, uh, that they've em embraced and deployed Industry 4.0 in their operating model. Uh, so 85% are still uh, still at earlier stages of adoption. The uh, second trend is that because of these changing market requirements, because of changing competitive pressures, uh, investments in robotics are increasing. Uh, and, as, and for AMRs, they're skyrocketing. So this is a, a market that was worth about $3 billion last year. It's expected to hit $104 billion over the next 10 years and account for 60% of all commercial and industrial robot spend. It's a massive opportunity. Um, the third trend is that those manufacturers that have invested in Industry 4.0 have been able to have proven to be more resilient and more responsive to market shocks. Uh, a study la uh, last year from McKinsey uh, indicated that uh, for those organizations that felt that they had fully embraced Industry 4.0, that 96% of them felt that they were able to respond to the shocks from COVID, supply chain disruptions, labor disruptions, lockdowns, et cetera. On the flip side, for those organizations that had not uh, implemented uh, Industry 4.0 in Industry initiatives, 80% were significantly disrupted. Uh, so clearly a, a need for uh, resilience enabled by Industry 4.0 uh, becomes a, a, a competitive advantage and a competitive requirement, frankly, uh, in this ever-changing world. Um, the fourth trend is uh, that 5G is, uh, is at the early stages but on the rise. And um, in the future, uh, one in five of these uh, mobile robots are expected to have 5G connectivity. But a challenge for, for all of us is, can we encourage the market to adopt this at a faster rate and at a higher rate? Um, at the end of our presentation, we'll show you some reasons uh, that we hope will compel you to see that 5G is, is an essential enabler of new forms of productivity and effectiveness using mobile robots. Um, the fifth trend is that uh, I'm sorry. The, the the fourth the 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 fifth trend yes uh, is that um, I'm sorry. The the fourth trend is that customers see the opportunity for 5G within their factory, but there are also some some short term uh, concerns, uh, particularly around the maturity of the ecosystem uh, and also the availability of compelling uh, data plans. And so. The industry uh, supply side has more work to do to lower barriers to adoption of 5G so that customers can exploit the, flu the full potential. And then the, the fifth trend is that for those organizations that have deployed 5G and that are embracing it, they're able to see uh, extremely uh, uh, advanced forms of closed loop intelligent automation with data being streamed from hundreds or thousands of fixed and mobile sensors analyzed centrally and used for the efficient orchestration of robots, people, and processes. Um, 
Before we move on to the next slide, I'd like to call your attention to a second poll. So I'd love to get uh, uh, the uh, audience's responses to uh, uh, this so that we can uh, get that information in real time. Um, but on to the next chart. Um, we've, uh, we've talked about uh, manufacturing mobile robots and 5G as discrete trends. But we want to look at how these elements combine into a new paradigm for delivering customer value, flexibility, and responsiveness. Um, looking at the uh, next chart, uh, at Verizon, uh, we, uh, we talk about the eight currencies of uh, 5G. And uh, based on these eight currencies, we have a hypothesis that network orchestrated thin client mobile robots will perform better at lower cost. The eight currencies of 5G, well, you know, for most people today, the uh, uh, consumer uh, interest is really around throughput and the ability to download your favorite Netflix movie while you're walking through Times Square in seconds. Uh, the business benefits are more exciting, but maybe less entertaining. Um, and later on, we'll hear from a, a, a manufacturer, Ericsson, about how they're using uh, 5G, the, the reliability of 5G to support mission critical robot applications wirelessly in their smart factory. 5G with its low latency ability to support extremely low latency communications enables compute intensive processes like navigation, object recognition and obstacle detection to be safely and reliably delivered over the network. What this means is that there's a need for less onboard com computation and storage which means less onboard energy consumption, so robots can do more work in between charges. The other part of our hypothesis is that mobile robots have the potential to transform every single device from a, uh, into an active data gathering sensor. So instead of just moving around, they're moving around, gathering data, providing that back, which enables true near-time digital twins of shop floors and production environments. And of course, with 5G, this extends from indoors to outdoors. So robots or other devices that are enabled by 5G can support multi, more flexible, uh, have more flexibility in where they're operating. But perhaps most importantly, with 5G, all network devices can be centrally orchestrated with jobs as dynamically assigned to the best human or robot worker. And that is a, a, a key element of enabling the dynamism and efficiency and responsiveness that we discussed earlier on. Um, before we move on to the next chart, I'll just take a look at the poll. Uh, very interesting, the um, lack of senior executive sponsorship and direction and unclear ROI and high upfront investment uh, were the two uh, strongest or highest uh, uh, responses for why Industry 4.0 is lagging. Uh, very interesting. Um, let's move on to the next chart. Well, we'll talk about some of the early results that we're seeing from our work with partners, and you'll hear more about this from our panel, uh, work that we're doing in, uh, in the market, combining 5G with mobile robots. First of all, we've um, worked with organizations to enable mobile robots to perform processing off-board on Mac and delivered over 5G. Uh, we've seen some amazing results across aerial, mobile terrestrial, and stationary robots. One drone partner that we've worked with was able to achieve a 10% per device cost reduction by removing processing from their device. And more importantly, they were able to achieve a 40% increase in flight time. That's 40% more work that their drones can perform in between charges. Electron, who you'll hear from later, uh, was able to replace specialized sensors on their uh, intelligent robot arm, uh, which reduces with, with, with commodity cameras, which reduces the cost significantly. And also with 5G, they're going to be able to better support customer um, enablement and product configuration remotely, which means much lower cost and much greater responsiveness. Ghost and Vecna, two other partners that you hear from today, were able to perform sensitive remote quadrupedal and forklift operations over 5G, and we have more exciting 5G innovations to come. So as Elise mentioned, Verizon's committed to industry 4.0 solutions, and we're eager to work with manufacturers mobile robot and industrial automation suppliers to accelerate your transition to 5G. But rather than just talk about it, how about we show you some of the commercial capabilities and investments we're making in 5G enabled mobile robots. 
The fourth industrial revolution, or Industry 4.0, is a new chapter in human development, where interconnectivity and interoperability are beginning to deliver large-scale automation for manufacturing and other industrial sectors. 5G is the foundational technology enabling Industry 4.0, because you can't create an interoperable system that can manage the amount of data, the amount of speed, and the reliability and security requirements necessary with Wi-Fi or even 4G. One of those areas is through the orchestration of robots. At Verizon, one way we are helping manufacturers usher in Industry 4.0 is by using the power of 5G to enable robotic automation at scale. But don't take our word for it. In terms of improving distribution capabilities within the factory, we've seen when we visited other factories, almost everyone uses some kind of autonomous vehicle, but they typically use it in non-mission critical ways, meaning moving supplies and materials from a warehouse into the floor. We do that as well, but because of the increased reliability and higher performance that we can get over 5G, we can use them in more intricate manners, for example, instead of conveyor systems connecting all of our lines, we can actually interrupt some of them and have AMRs move materials because that gives us more manufacturing flexibility. So it's little things like that, right? We can use them in more spaces uh, to do more things. And that frees up our people and gives us more agility for new products, right? By connecting Verizon's 5G Ultra Wideband and Verizon 5G Edge with intelligent use case specific software, we will better meet manufacturers' wide variety of needs for today and the future. Acquiring Austrian-based Incubed IT is one way we are bringing this vision to life. Thanks to the acquisition and our existing work in the space, our robotic capabilities are focused on powering the future of automation for our enterprise customers. And the work we are doing with our partners further demonstrates Verizon's commitment to developing new and innovative robotic businesses and use cases, leveraging 5G. By integrating Verizon's 5G network with Incubed IT's autonomous navigation technology, we have the ability to administer, manage, and optimize mixed fleets of robots in a variety of settings at scale. The opportunity? A giant leap forward in autonomous manufacturing by providing a symbiotic relationship between robots and the humans that work around them. Our solution will enable a variety of autonomous mobile robots to take on dull, dirty, and dangerous jobs, to better perform traditional material handling jobs in factories and warehouses, and to provide rich, on-the-ground, near-real-time intelligence to systems and operators. What's next? We are collaborating with OEMs and manufacturers in a variety of industries to further validate use cases around 5G, MEC, and autonomous mobile robot software. We invite you to join us on this adventure. Okay, so um, now we're going to turn to the panel discussion and the industry showcase. So Joel will be joining us, and uh, I'd also like to welcome Avik D from uh, sorry the chief executive officer at Ghost Robotics, Matthew Cheruka, the director of strategy at Vecna Robots, and Robert Topple, president of Electron Inc. Uh, hi, hi everybody, it's it's great to it's great to see you, and thanks so much for joining us today. Okay, so um, before we start with the questions, we, we've heard we've just heard from Verizon, and um, Joel also touched on some of your work together. Um, but I think that it would be great if our audience got the chance to hear um, about Ghost Robotics, Vecna Robotics and Electronic Inc. Um, so perhaps we could spend the first part of this session with uh, maybe around one minute each, if that's OK, from Avic, Matthew and Robert to give an overview of your organisation before we open up to the panel. So um, how about, um, Avik, would you like to go first and start with your one minute overview of Ghost Robotics, please? Yeah, with pleasure. Uh, thank you for inviting me to this panel. Um, <clears throat> so I have been studying the design and control of bio-inspired robots for you know, my master's, PhD, and postdoc. And uh, yeah, during my PhD at uh, UPenn uh, in Philadelphia, I started a robot company with, um, with one of my uh, uh, lab mates and uh, that company is called Ghost Robotics. We're making quadrupedal robots for industry and government <clears throat> applications. Uh, the company has about uh, 25 people now. 
Um, we're seeing a lot of interest in robots that can help in all sorts of areas. The applications we're focusing on now are kind of using the robot as a mobile IoT platform, kind of. Uh, so just to have sensors out there collecting data that's needed. Um, so we're also looking at applications in persistent security and automated inspection. Um, yeah, and really uh, the robots that kind of we build are helpful in uh, uh, because they give you mobility in, in environments with rough terrain and stairs. Um, so it's sort of giving an advantage over wheeled robots and they give long endurance so that the robots can operate uh, without being recharged or needing human intervention for you know three to four hours or something like that. Um, yeah, so I'm uh, looking forward to uh, participating in this panel. Fantastic, that's fantastic. Thank you so much for that. And, and Matthew, how, how about Vecna Robotics? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so thanks for having us. Um, and yeah, Vecna Robotics um, is a robotics company based out of Boston that focuses on self-driving material handling equipment. Uh, so we take, uh, we partner with forklift OEMs, take off-the-shelf equipment, and turn those into fully autonomous mobile robots um, that have the ability to adapt their own paths and adapt to their environment as they're navigating. Uh, on the fleet management side, they're also responding to um, dynamic changes in processes and balancing that with traffic management and so on. And then the last component, which we'll probably touch on with some of the work we do with Verizon, is that they have the ability to live stream data, and then we use that data to pump it back into the system to make it better over time and support and orchestrate them remotely. Fantastic. Okay, th thanks for that, Matthew. That's great. And, and Robert, um, Electron Inc., would you like to spend your one minute telling us about that, please? Thank you very much. Um, I want to say we really enjoyed being part of the 5G cohort at New Lab. Um, we didn't just go there to kind of experience 5G. We were trying to determine if we could even do things like remote programming in our AI. I've been in manufacturing for over 30 years, and one of the challenges that you have with um, adopting automation is specifically for high mix low volume applications is that adoption cycle. It's it's really challenging. If the company's not ready and if we can see in the polls if we don't have the support from management, it's a real challenge. So we were there to try to learn how we could use 5G for remote programming. But in addition to that, as mentioned, we were having we were struggling with our onboard AI tools and by using the Mac, it greatly expanded our ability to use that tool. And I have to say, we really exceeded expectations in the command and control side of the robot using AI. So pretty, pretty great results. Fantastic. That's brilliant. Well, thanks so much for um, you know providing an overview for for everybody that's listening. And I think we may have lost Joel. Hopefully, hopefully he'll be back with us because I'd like to now um, open the questions um, you know to to everybody. I want to start with one that I think is probably an interest. It is probably a question that everybody might have a comment on. So I, so maybe you can all think about it, and we'll go to to each person. So based on your experiences of of five G so far. What is it that what is it that you see as being the biggest opportunity, and, and probably the follow-on question from that would be, um, and you know, how would this be beneficial for manufacturers? So, so I don't know who, who would anybody like to go first with that, or would you like me to um, vote somebody to speak? Robert, please go ahead. Yeah, I would say <clears throat> for us, it's definitely the ability to to cut down the adoption cycle. Um, 5G enables quite quite a, a number of different elements. Some of the things that we discovered were not only was the latency low um, and the reliability high, but the consistency of the signal was much, much tighter. We had less variability on the signal. Uh, that enabled us to do some really exciting things with the AI and have it respond uh, very consistently. So I think that the primary you know, focus that we see in, in, in helping us is to give us the tools to help people adopt automation quicker. I'll go out on a bit of a limb here, having been in manufacturing for so long and dealing with lean manufacturing and try to implement that. Traditionally, the approach is to completely vet out the manufacturing cycle, make it really clean, and then implement on autom autom uh, automation. The challenge with that is very few companies get there. And ironically, having a lot of time doing that in manufacturing 
the new tools, the new automation, the mobile robots, the things like mobile edge computing enable us to, to kind of reset and skip some of those challenges and move automation much further up in the adoption cycle. Yeah, I, I can echo some of that. Um, it, 5G definitely um, streamlines some of the um, upfront adoption. And then for us, it's been about improving the performance and ROI of the solution. Um, so some of the work that we did with Verizon was around um, live streaming richer data from the robots and how we could use that both on individual robot performance and then overall fleet performance. Um, and so when, uh, you know, our, our robots, they're forklifts, they're moving thousands of pounds. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of sensing that needs to go into them and we're using automotive grade 3D sensing for that. Um, and so being able to process all of that data um, Historically, we've had to do that on the robot, 5G, by being able to process that over the network, over the edge. Um, there's a lot of potential long-term to reduce the cost of our robots, but that also um, provides a lot more intelligence to the fleet because now the robot isn't just sensing what it's currently doing, but you can use that data and other ubiquitous sensing um, to improve overall fleet performance. Um, so if you drive by an area and you notice that an aisle's blocked, um, or if you have a sensor that is detecting that something is blocked, as opposed to our robots needing to react to that, you know, halfway down the aisle, you get that info ahead of time that gets fed back um, to the individual systems. And then all these resources can more intelligently plan around what's going on in the factory. Um, so um, for us, uh, we see a lot of promise with 5G, uh, like we said, both in improving ROI and then the overall intelligence of the system. Yep, uh, so uh, also uh, from, from Ghost's perspective, uh, yeah, we're, uh, the robots of the type that we make, um, you know, they're, they're mobile and they have to carry their own power source. Um, and uh, the fact that they're supported by legs means that mass is a very critical issue. Um, so we put a lot of effort into making uh, our robots more efficient so that the uh, motors are consuming the least amount of energy possible uh, for the robot to move around. Um, but, you know, as the robots are doing more things, the app algorithms, uh, they're getting power hungry and, you know, computation is getting better. But um, we, you know, definitely need uh, uh, energy uh, on the robot. Um, but if you put a bigger battery on, you need bigger motors, and it's kind of a vicious cycle with uh, something like a legged robot. So. It's a kind of an interesting approach to try and rig the cycle by trying to keep the robot pretty bare bones and try to utilize the cloud for some of these higher level functionality. Um, so, you know, what we're kind of thinking of internally is that the robot kind of has a spinal cord sort of thing to help it kind of move its limbs and uh, coordinate, but the brain is sort of in the cloud. Um, and that, you know, link is via some kind of high bandwidth network, maybe uh, with 5G. Um, uh, there are also some other interesting possibilities like uh, multi-robot mesh communication without kind of needing to go back to a base station that we're you know, thinking about a little bit. Uh, and another is the, uh, the the usage of the technology for localization itself. Um, so I, I think, uh, you know, I'm not I'm not an expert in that domain, but uh, it's uh, uh, I've been hearing about it and uh, it does sound pretty exciting. Um, yeah, in terms of how it will help manufacturers, I, I really think that you know, as robots start to get more useful, they'll have, you know, more sensors. So you need more data about the environment and, and they have more ability to, you know, move, uh, you know, uh, actuate the forklift or whether it be, you know, move a, a, a limb to actuate some, uh, you know, manipulate something in the, in the physical world. Uh, so as the robots are more capable, you know, they'll just need more data going through the systems, um, whether it be within one robot, within groups of robots. So yeah, just enabling uh, the data flow will, I think, uh, unlock that potential. Um, and, you know, not to, not to mention that the, um, you know, uh, things like uh, preventative maintenance and other uh, machine learning applications also enabled by, by data flow. So, yeah, these are the things that I think are pretty exciting about 5G. I'll just uh, add on to what everyone else said, uh, in addition to the advantages that uh, Robert and Matt and Avik uh, described, I think one of the uh, 
a significant opportunity for manufacturers is the ability to establish that communication fabric that then enables the effective orchestration of their business processes across all of the different devices in their environment. So different vendors who have different devices that do different things currently tend to operate you know, their device, but being able to enable a, a factory operator to optimize their processes across different devices and people uh, enables a, a really high level of dynamism, responsiveness, and productivity that hasn't been achievable up till now. And you can really only do that with wireless that is highly secure, highly reliable, and flexible, and that's 5G. Fantastic. Thanks so much, everybody. I think um, hearing from all four of you, um, we, we can see that, you know, there's, there's not only one thing that 5G um, hopefully is is delivering for us now. And, and uh, I, I think hearing the, the breadth of the um, different um, uh, applications, for want of a better word, is, um, is, is really great to hear. And actually, just as you, you were talking about that, it, it made me think of the... Um, the question in the poll actually that was asked Joel on the um, you know what's holding some companies back and I think you know one of the things that we, we talked about was unclear ROI uh, lack of uh, senior executive sponsorship and direction and then also actually there was I think you may not have seen at the bottom of, this, of the options but the technology not being mature enough was also um, something that um, was voted reasonably highly for and, and I was just thinking about how um, all of these activities that you guys have been getting involved in, and because you're demonstrating the application, you're seeing return on investment, you're seeing how, um, uh, you know, uh, the, the potential benefits and seeing them um, happening. I was wondering if you kind of had any more thoughts about that and, and maybe help answer that question about how um, or maybe not answer the question, that might be too difficult actually, but maybe suggest an approach for how um, we can help um, get the word out there um, that 5G is potentially able to solve these challenges that manufacturers might be facing, or, or at least answer some of the questions that are currently out there. So that's quiet. So any, anybody got any? I guess what I'm thinking around is um, proof of concepts and demos and um, maybe webinars like today. So go ahead, Robert. So that's exactly what we're doing. Um, we've been working with uh, customers on um, proof of concept use cases using the robot, trying to learn where we need to beef up the robot or improve it. And we've got discussions right now currently with about five companies where they have some challenges. We're going to be going in and setting up use case demonstrations with them. Um, for us, the 5G you know, opportunity really enables us to change our business model. Um, for, we've been uh, looking really hard as robot as a service. Is that possible? How would we support that? Um, and, and what... Uh, AI type applications that we can support. And I mentioned earlier that we have this challenge with local AI horsepower versus what we really require. And the mobile edge computer really gave us the ability to make a pretty big jump. And that pretty big jump, for example, um, this is a use case that we're looking at right now. If you look at robots doing screw driving, putting screws into uh, you know, a machine or uh, an end product, um, you know, as a low volume, high mix guy, the fact that people have defective screws kind of is puzzling to me. But if you're putting in 5,000 screws a day, you have to make sure that those screws are, are, you know, have been quality vetted. And so a lot of people go through a quality process to vet those before they put them into the system. With our system and the camera approach, we can take, uh, as the robot pulls that screw out of the screw presenter or is being presented, we can have a camera look at that and know whether that screw is good and automatically reject it. So that changes the model, lowers the cost. So those are the kinds of things that we're doing and talking with our customers. Another thing that has been mentioned in, in this about 5G is security. Um, my former business was uh, uh, that I was involved in was a military aerospace electronics supplier. And we're dealing with the uh, computer uh, cyber com uh, maturity model matrix and called CMMC, 
And the challenge for companies in the U.S. that are supplying the government is they have to be CMMC certified. That means they don't want you on their network. So this gives us the ability to do things where we're not on your network, we have a completely separate secure network, and we can do our demonstrations. So there's kind of another hook there. But for us, it's the proof of concept. The other thing is I think we have to lower the cost of implementation. And um, it's critical to, as we've seen in the poll, you've got to get to the right person in the company so that there's a financial case for this. The challenge that we see in all manufacturing today is the lack of skilled manufacturing employees. There's going to be a 2.4 million shortage in the U.S. for manufacturing employees in the next eight years. And so companies that we're seeing in terms of use cases are old line manufacturing, even though they may have an automation sector, they're doing a lot of automation. Um, they have a subset of that that isn't automated, and they're having a very difficult time getting employees where normally you just throw people at a problem. That is becoming less and less uh, of an option, and people that normally wouldn't even consider automation are now beginning to discuss it. I like to, uh, there, there's, um, I think the, 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 there's a great response, Robert. One of the things that we're trying to do to encourage the uh, adoption of 5G within manufacturing or address some of the concerns is by um, sponsoring or, 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 or supporting the development of robotic use cases or capabilities that support robotic use cases that tie directly to the business challenges that Robert was describing. So we know that manufacturers need to be more dynamic. We know they need to be more efficient and competitive. We know they've got a labor shortage and we know they're going to invest in, in robots, automation, and especially in mobile robots. But if those mobile robots aren't optimized for 5G, then they don't create that virtuous cycle, getting the full value. So what we're doing, and this is a shameless plug, but working with companies like Vecna, Ghost, uh, Electron, and others is working with them to create 5G-enabled or optimized versions of their products so that a customer could say, okay, I've got 5G or I'm considering 5G, let me get more value out of my investments in automation, combining it with 5G. And so to any, device manufacturer, any OEMs out there, uh, please, uh, we're, we're eager to, to connect with you, to work with you, to collaborate, to create versions or optimized uh, uh, forms of your products so that we can collaboratively tackle this opportunity together and bring solutions to manufacturers that, that meet their, their business challenges. I, I'd like to throw in something really quick that we discovered also in our 5G cohort, and that was that because of the mobile edge computing and 5G, it really enabled us to, to have adaptive manufacturing um, and be able to have the, our system sort of react on the fly. And that, to me, is also something I think that will really help enable um, lower volume high mix or quicker change out. Fantastic. Thank you so much, guys. I think that's really it's really insightful. And I've noticed that as we've been talking, we've we've got quite a few questions coming in. So um, uh, I wonder if we maybe should go to those. And there's one that I've just spotted, um, and this is to um, Avic. And I think it's picking up on what you were talking about earlier around um, the uh, robots with the spine and the brain in different places. So um, in, in order to support the brain in the cloud, do you have latency dependencies and do you envisage that the brain running on an edge compute, sorry, do you envisage the brain running on an edge compute in the factory or campus? Yeah, no, that's a very good point. And um, uh, yeah, so I, I do think the reason I said this is spinal cord, you know, it's doing simple things uh, for very latency sensitive um, tasks, such as actually coordinating the limbs probably so that will stay on, on board the robot, but uh, things that are a little less latency sensitive, but still, you know, very sensitive, um, uh, like navigation, um, you know, mapping, uh, that kind of thing, those kinds of functions, I think um, they were sort of not feasible with the kind of standard Wi-Fi or uh, those kinds of networks, but um, they could be passing the threshold of being at least feasible um, with, uh, with 5G, which is, uh, you know, it's kind of like a, a, a step change a little bit to, to how to think about, um, you know, moving those algorithms. Um, uh, that's actually something we're working on right now with Verizon. So hopefully we can get that to work and have some kind of demonstration of the feasibility. 
Fantastic. Well, we'll definitely look forward to see the demo of that when it's ready. <laughs> Okay, um, there was another question in from um, April, which uh, actually I think the, the announcement might have been provided on the chat if anybody's looking at that, but um, uh, do uh, mobile robots only refer to AMRs? Um, and what about other industrial robots such as collaborative and AGVs? So I don't know if anybody on the um, panel would like to pick one, this one up. Sure, I can take that. That's... Um near and dear to my heart given what we do <laughs> um so yeah there's a variety of different mobile robot technologies out there um and um, agvs and mobile robots in general have existed since the 50s um, but the latest amr technologies um, when people say amr uh, the real difference is that um, an amr is the ability to adapt its navigation behaviors and its path um, and respond to what's going on in the facility. So as opposed to um, following virtual lines on the ground and stopping for things that get in its way, it's able to circumvent those obstacles or reroute down alternative paths. It's kind of like using ways on your phone instead of um, just uh, looking at the ground and following the same line every time. Um, and uh, these AMRs have varying degrees of collaboration, so there are very small ones used for e-com that are designed to go within a couple inches of you, and then there are ones like mine where um, they'll sense you from 20, 30 feet away, and they'll slow down or you know stop um, as they get closer to you because um, physics. So, <laughs> we'll, uh, but uh, generally speaking. AMRs will be more adaptive and more collaborative than uh, traditional AGV or mobile robot systems. Right. Th thanks for answering that, Matthew. That's that's great. Okay. And I think actually we've got a, a question here as well that goes back to, um, I think, picking up on uh, what Robert was talking around. Um, so what do you see the adoption cycle for robotics in the low volume, high mix um, applications? And what do you think the future holds with the integration with 5G and mobile-led computing with humans in manufacturing? Frankly, actually, that's a bit of a mix for everybody in there, I think, maybe. I can jump in and then uh, uh, turn over the mic. I think uh, what I want to kind of continue to, elaborate, uh, to discuss is, is uh, high mix, low volume is a particular challenge. Um, we're looking at use cases that have a particular uh, underlining um, uh, requirement, and then how can that spread? So, for example, if you think about a robot dispensing a fluid, this is a mechanical arm robot type thing, dispensing a fluid. Well, that can be, you know, uh, masking a circuit board pre-solder process. That can be gluing uh, tennis shoes together or clothes or putting a seal on a, a windshield for a, an automobile. Um, the key is how we're going to create these cells so that they're flexible, um, I think one area that I'm pretty excited about is if you think about the mobile robots and getting rid of conveyors, that's a pretty, conveyors are kind of very rigid and define the plant. It's, and if you think about lean manufacturing, you want to be able to move around, you want to be able to be flexible. Now I can have a, a robot cell. Uh, in our case, in our demo that we did for the 5G studio, we were just doing a simple um, fulfillment uh, uh, application. And instead of us having somebody place the object in a location, having the robot place it in the fulfillment slot, we could have a mobile robot just come up with a bin of the uh, objects and have the robot take them out of the bin. And then that robot goes off and does, or that uh, mobile robot goes off and supports another machine. So it enables us to have more adaptive uh, manufacturing. It enables us to spread those use cases, which are similar, screw diving, dispense, machine tending, those kinds of things so that it's easier for customers to implement. The other thing that we're doing and that we were pretty excited about in, in terms of our application was it enabled, uh, 5G and the mobile edge computing enabled us to have the, the user, um, and you'll hear no code or low code programming a lot, have the user do a simple program on the robot or a, a particular application, quickly be able to upload that to the Mac but also interact with the development of the AI for that application. And that cuts down the programming time. So our model is, how do we cut that programming time? How do we cut the requirements for the developer to implement that? 
we don't want programmers, we want assemblers to be able to do this. So that's kind of our approach, but it really melds with all of those other things where we have robots communicating with each other, both mobile and fixed robots. And I think that's where we sort of whittle away at this adoption cycle. I'd like to just weigh in on the second part of the question that Robert was answering about the integration of 5G and mobile edge with humans in manufacturing. Humans are not going to go away, and they, the ability to establish this rich, communi secure communications fabric enables all the different elements on a factory, on a shop floor, to work better together. So whether it's mobile robots or conveyor belts or robot arms or people who have access to better real-time information, whether it's on a heads-up display or a screen or a screen on a robot, like all of this, in the, the information that it needs, that enables people to be more productive, safer, et cetera, and interact with those other elements of mechanical and mobile automation, that's really the promise of 5G and Mac. And absolutely, we see autonomous mobile robots being an augmenter uh, of, of human productivity, not a pure replacement. Yeah, I think that, that, it's a lot of what we've been touching on here. Of um, And uh, Robert touched on some of this with needing the modular designs and sort of adaptive automation, which goes back to there's a lot more compute, there's a lot more bandwidth that these robots need to be able to do. Um, this also goes back to Elise's early point of needing that inner connectivity, right, of you're going to have all these different pieces of automation that if they're not physically attached to each other and they're not all coming from the same source and they need to be able to talk with one another, that takes up a lot of network bandwidth and that's where 5G comes in. And then as Joe mentioned with the humans in the loop, um, there's always going to be exceptions, right? And so you need to be able to pull humans into what's going on. They need to be tied into the processes. They need to understand what's, uh, have that real-time view. Um, and that's that's a lot of data and that's a lot of different systems all talking together. Um, and 5G is a great foundation for that. Fantastic, Matthew, thank you so much. That was a perfect um, sentence to finish on, I think. Um, we've actually come to the top of the hour, so we, we're having to stop now. I think we could talk for, for a lot longer. Um, but I want to thank everybody, um, everybody that we've got on the panel here, and also um, Elise, who's joining us earlier. Thank you so much for um, your time today. I think it's been really um, fascinating. Um, hopefully, the blog will follow um, on. I'm just um, I, sorry, it'll follow on shortly, and we'll send a link to everybody when that is available. And um, just for the last second, um, reminding everybody of the 5G IoT for Manufacturing uh, website, and please do get in touch if you would like to know more. Thanks very much, everybody, for your time today.